Welcome. In this presentation, my group and I will be discussing the importance of goal setting and time management. My portion, I'll be defining goals. So what is a goal? A goal is a desired result that you envision, then plan and commit to achieve. Having goals that you aim to achieve will help you to succeed in college, but the problem is that many of us don't know how to set them. In these next few slides, I'll be explaining ways to effectively set goals and plan accordingly. Here are the five rules of goal setting. One, you wanna set motivational goals. This is important because if you don't set goals that motivate you, then you're likely not to accomplish them. Two, set SMART goals. This is a method that ensures that your goals are effective and realistic. Three, put goals into writing. Upon reading the textbook, when writing your goals down, it becomes tangible and real. When you use phrases like, I will, you are more susceptible to achieving the things that you write. Four, you wanna have an action plan. This is simply writing down how you will complete your goals. This will help you monitor your progress when you cross out each step as you go. And lastly, five, stick with it. Remember, success doesn't happen overnight. Aim towards your goals daily and never give up. In this slide, I'll be going over my favorite method of goal setting, which is called SMART goals. Oftentimes we set goals that are too broad, which causes discouragement and eventually leads to them being incomplete. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Now I will break down each meaning. You wanna make specific goals. The reason is because knowing exactly what you want creates a clear vision when setting out to accomplish anything. Your goals need to be measurable. Figure out exactly how you will know when you achieve your desired goal. For example, desiring to lose 10 pounds is one thing, but if you have no weight scale, how will you know when you've lost that weight? Next, you wanna make sure your goals are achievable. Setting achievable goals makes them possible. I believe this to be the part where many of us fall short. We make goals that aren't achievable because we overestimate our capabilities. So set goals that you know you can achieve. Setting a goal to make 1 billion by the end of the day isn't achievable, but a goal of $50 a day then becomes achieve achievable. Relevant goals. To set a relevant goal is to make sure your goals relate to your future. Setting a goal to learn French isn't relevant to a career in firefighting. Relevant goals will help you to save years of possible wasted time. And lastly, we have time bound. A goal that is time bound will have a start and finish date. This will create a sense of urgency to complete whatever you set out to accomplish. Goal setting isn't only used for academic success. It can also be used in any area of your life, including your career. Once you've started your career, that isn't the finish line. If anything, it's just the beginning. You can set goals in your career toward promotions, creativity, education, and many other things. Goal setting is important in your career because it gives you the framework to be a leader and achieve milestones. In goal setting, there are three types of goals to consider. We first have long-term goal. These are goals that you want to achieve over several years, typically three to five. And an example would be, could be earning a bachelor's degree or finishing med school. Next, we have medium term goals. These goals are goals that you wish to complete within one to three years. And lastly, you have your short term goals. These are immediate goals that set you up to achieve your larger or more long term goals. It is important to identify these goals when setting out to achieve them so that you have a proper time frame to accomplish them. This is a quote that I inserted from the textbook that stuck out to me. If you don't know where you're going, you might wind up someplace else. Someplace else might not be where you wanna be. So if you wanna have the future you desire, create a path, set, set out goals and stick to it. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make in college is trying to go through it alone. It can be very overwhelming at times, but you should always ask for help. And one of the best resources to do so is by social networking. Here are a few, few social ways that you can tap into goal supporting or AKA people power. These are just a few ways for you to interact 
and make new friends that will help you stay focused on your goals and keep you on track. So you can act actively engage with the college community. You can volunteer to help others get an internship or join student organizations. I would like to conclude my portion of this presentation by saying that you will come across setbacks and obstacles. So here I will give you a list of four problem solving strategies that will help you in college and can also be applied to any aspect of your life. So one, ask yourself, what is the problem? How is it affecting me and other people? Two, how are other people dealing with the problem? Three, what are my range of solutions and are they realistic? And four, what do I need to do to implement the implement solutions? Hello, my name is Maritza Pontius Gomez, and my topic is your physical environment. I'll be going over, over the study environment, distractions, and multitasking, technology, and productivity. Study environment. It is important to choose an environment that is distraction free to be able to be productive free. On college success, your physical environment, it gave some examples of your study environment in which students can circle yes or no, and at the end of the survey, students can reflect on the answers. Some of the examples that stood out to me was comfort, too much or too little, the clock. Avoid being a slave to the clock. Temperature and humidity. Number one, comfort. If you're studying, if you're doing it on the comfy chair or you're laying down on your bed, personally wise, when I do my assignments, I lay down on my bed, get all nice tucked in, have a little blanket, get all very comfy. And I'm like, I'm gonna be productive. I start doing my assignment. Next thing you know, five or 10 minutes, I'm fast asleep and I get nothing done that afternoon. Being way too, com too comfort is a distraction itself. However, being too little comfortable is also a distraction. For instance, if you're doing your assignments on the floor, you're gonna get distracted because you're gonna say, the floor is too hard, my back hurt, my back hurts, it hurts, I can't do my homework. And you're already distracted. The clock. Sometimes we say we're gonna dedicate this whole entire day to just doing assignments to be able to catch up, and that's all right, that's perfectly fine. However, assignment to assignment to assignment to assignment and not giving ourselves enough time to be able to fully process the information between assignments or subjects is isn't very productive why is and the second one temperature or humidity if you're going into a coffee shop the library a little study office or a desk if it's too cold, you already distract itself. If it's too hot, it's already distracting itself. We we have to be able to pick the right environment in which we're gonna start doing our assignments or schoolwork. The second one, like I said, distractions and multitasking. Distraction is an object or person that directs one's attention away from something else. That can either be music, TV, a pet, you're gonna be distracted by the pet, by its cuteness. <laughs> or food, if you're eating food while you're doing your assignment, you can just be munching, munching, and munching, and you're gonna be able to give your full attention to your homework. Multitasking, the practice of doing multiple things simultaneously. There's a lot of debate on multitasking. Some say, yeah, it works perfectly fine for me. I can multitask. Some say, no, it doesn't work perfectly fine for me. I get less things done when, than when I'm doing one assignment at a time. And personally, I think it's I think it's up to your own decision. If you if you can experiment and do start multitasking on some assignments and you see that your productivity went up and you're able to retain the information, then by all means go right ahead. Multitask. However, if you see that when you multitask, it's you're less productive, you're being able to not being able to obtain the information in which you were studying, 
then when you're not doing then when you're doing one assignment at a time multitasking isn't best for you technology 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 <laughs> when you're doing your assignment most likely you should put your phone on mute or silence or give a heads up to some family and friends to the, not text you unless it's an emergency because technology distracts you right away you open your phone oh there's a new message oh there's a new notification that 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 there's a new email there's a new sale and it distracts you from doing your assignment productivity the effort and ability to perform efficiently in your in the studies you may thinking, oh, I'm productive, and you do your assignment for like two hours, but you didn't get nothing done. You're not being productive. You're just wasting time with that. You're just wasting time. You have to be able to complete and efficiently perform your studies. And another big thing is managing the time. Managing your time, doing things at the last minute you, you'll get it done, however, it won't be in the best quality work. And that is all for my... Everyone, my name is Sofia Nicastro, and I'll be discussing your use of time. To ensure that you are using your time wisely, there are three tips you should follow. Identify your time management style, create a schedule, and get better at prioritizing. To identify your time management style, you can answer questions like how do you proceed when your professor posts a prompt for an essay assignment that is due in two weeks. If you said that you would get it done immediately, you would be classified as the early bird. As an early bird, you take immediate action to complete the assignments and you're driven and motivated, which leads to your success. However, you need to slow down and enjoy what you are learning. So is the balancing act. As a balancing act, you are aware of your skills and how long it will take you to complete your assignments. You are consistent and balanced with how you do your work, but you must go outside your boundaries to improve and challenge yourself. The pressure cooker, you tend to finish your assignments last minute, but you do work well under pressure, which leads to you turning your assignments in on time. But procrastination is your best friend. To get rid of this issue, you should Practice setting goals for yourself that you can um, attain in the day. And definitely there are no excuses to your procrastination. As an improviser, you also turn your assignments in last minute. However, you are more likely to miss assignments and do them poorly. You need to learn self-discipline and personal accountability to combat that issue and to learn how to organize as well. Do not be afraid to ask your professors for help if you are struggling with this. Creating a schedule. Creating a schedule is one of the most crucial steps you can do to help manage your time. And you should figure out what you prefer. Do you prefer only listing down like important dates like exams? Or do you prefer jotting down every single little detail and then have it planned out? To see what assignments you have to do throughout your semesters, check your class syllabus to see when they will be due and what you will be doing. Plan accordingly based on your availability, like if you have a job, you got to figure out how you will get your assignments done at the same time. I have a job, so this is something that I have to do. I suggest purchasing a planner or a whiteboard calendar so you can jot down or create your schedule in front of you instead of creating it in your head. I believe it is better to just see it firsthand or like right in front of you so it creates organization. Next slide demonstrates how many hours are in a week. And for a full-time student, this is how many hours you have to attend class. And this is how many hours you need to study for each of those classes per week. So you have to work on this and other uh, um, times throughout your week to figure out a schedule that fits your needs. Here's a schedule example that I use based on my personal availability. I have my Zoom college courses and how many hours and the priorities for each description over here and what times I will be doing them. Down here is where I include my relaxation and break time so I don't overwhelm myself with my work 
and studying for my, my classes. Did you know that 53% of undergraduate students and 61% of graduate students are frequent procrastinators? I too am a victim to procrastination and so are a lot of other college students. So it's a big issue that needs to be addressed. Some strategies that you can use to combat procrastination. You can limit your distractions such as turning your phone off or putting on airplane mode or do not disturb mode. Whenever I happen to get a notification on my phone, I always want to look at it and I know that other people have faced the same challenge. So like turning it off will help you a lot. Next is divide the content. Say you have a really big assignment such as a research paper and, it's, and all that work is quite overwhelming. So dividing it into sections and taking breaks between those sections will help not overwhelm yourself and keep you on task and focused on the, sub, the topic at hand. Next is set up a reward system. I have a reward system. So what I do is I work for a certain amount of time and, I, and then to reward myself for that work, I will um, take a little snack break or I will just go on my phone or listen to music. However, you do have to honor this system for it to work. You can't take advantage of like all these rewards and it can lead to even more procrastination. So be wise with this. The next is use checklists. You can create a che checklist for every task or assignments you need to get done and just check them off whenever you're finished. And that can help you stay organized and on task. Next is careers. You can also use these steps for your career, not just for school. For example, I'm going to be a cultural anthropologist and there's certain tasks that I have to complete, such as field work, writing on bias reports and teamwork. For field work, I have to research people of their cultures and aspects of their cultures. And I have to remain unbiased, which means that I cannot let my own culture interfere with how I obtain my research. And I may also have to work with other anthropologists and we have to work together to get our data to collect data on these cultures. The next is deadlines. For the data that I obtain from these cultures, I will most likely have to create research reports, which will have deadlines I need to meet. Being ethical and open-minded. As a cultural anthropologist, I need to be ethical and open-minded because some cultures may think that things from my culture are disrespectful. For example, shaking hands in America is a form of respect, but it may not be the case for someone else in a different culture. And there are consequences if I fail to do my job correctly, which are penalties or warnings. And if it gets that bad, I can get fired. And I definitely do not, cannot procrastinate. So like this image shows is that they, like I can do, I can make a list based on what I have to do and what I'm doing and what I have completed to stay organized and on task, which you can also use for school to be successful. So you can use both these steps, the steps I mentioned in this slide in my um, presentation to help you be successful in your career and in school. And these are the sources I used. And thank you for listening. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leo Career, and I will be doing creative thinking skills for my subtopic, the group project we are doing, goal setting and time management. Creative thinking can be used by anybody for work, college, or career planning. This is mainly used for problem solving and organizing time. Creative thinking allows people to create solutions to problems by thinking outside the box. This allows them to break boundaries and exceed limitations. To use creative thinking to be successful, you really have to know what your goal is and what is needed to organize your time and think of solutions to any problems or any bumps in the roads that you may have you also need to give yourself enough time to relax and let your brain regenerate itself it's best helpful to write down what you have thought of to solve problems or fix any walls that you may have come up on 
and to really just keep thinking to broaden your area of work. Creative types tend to be naturally motivated, said by Jillian Groening. If used right, creative thinking can be very beneficial for everybody and anybody that uses it, typically because it is better for you and it is very helpful in all categories of working and managing time and organizing. Ways to help brain think creatively. Exercise, it just helps your brain boost itself up. Sleep, just let your brain rest. And solving puzzles to give your brain a exercise and then thinking about something other than the problem at hand helps your mind create solutions and get really creative for itself about 60 percent of ceos polled cited creativity as the most important leadership quality compared with 52 percent for integrity and 35 percent for global thinking One career for creative thinking would be creative writer, which is exactly what you need to be when you are a creative writer. Thinking outside the box, being creative when writing is very needed for this career. You have to make your own stories and create your own world, basically. For this, you really need to be organized by using time management skills and set goals for if you want to be done with the chapter by three days or when you want to finish the book in total. Or if you're more of a journalist and you are going to be publishing this in a newspaper, you really need to organize and think of ways to solve any problems that come to hand.